Hey everyone, I'm Stephanie, host and head bookologist here at the Get Literate Podcast. I'm a book-loving, notebook-hoarding reader and writer on a mission to change lives one book and one notebook at a time. On this podcast, we explore the power of bookology and leading literate lives. We talk all things books and reading and notebooks and writing mixed in with mindful practices and creativity to create lives we love. You can expect regular weekly episodes focused on three books you need to know about on a bookish theme and how to bring those themes to life in our actual lives too. You can also expect author interviews, notebooking inspiration, and topics to help us grow through what we go through and take inspired action to make our lives better. So grab a notebook and your TBR list and let's get literate. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Get Literate podcast. I'm your host and head bookologist, Stephanie, and I am excited to introduce today's podcast topic and guest to you. You know, on this podcast, we explore how reading and writing can make life better. We've talked about setting ourselves and our days up for success and reading and writing as often as we can and want. We've talked about choosing our books carefully based on who we want to be, what we want to learn and how we want to feel. And we've even explored how to bring in our five senses and writing to enhance the entire reading experience. But today we're exploring something new. It's something that I have talked about inside my restorative reading course, but I've never talked about it on the podcast until now. And I have the perfect guests to help me do it. Gail Ward Olmsted. Gail is the author of multiple books I have loved. Miranda Writes, Miranda Knights, and my favorite, the soon to be released in just a couple of days, Catherine's Remarkable Road Trip. And when I think about why I love her book so much, I've really been able to identify that it's because of the characters. I can identify with them, I admire them, and I feel like each one of them has had some sort of lesson to teach me. And the more I really thought about that idea, the more I realize that these fictional characters inside the books we read, they can feel like real life friends. They can be real life mentors and real life life coaches on hand whenever we need them. And that's especially true for Gail's characters. And that's why she is here today to explore this topic with us and introduce you to her newest book, Catherine's Remarkable Road Trip. Gail, welcome to the Get Literate Podcast. I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you so much. I appreciate being here. It's a good opportunity. Yeah, well, I think you're the perfect person to have this conversation with because in all of the books that I have read of yours, it really is the characters that are, they're speaking to me. Whether it was, um, and Miranda writes, it was actually when I was first starting my podcast. So I felt like it was the instant um, connection as she is is podcasting. Um, and now with Catherine Remarkable Road Trip, I feel like I've got this beautiful mentor that can just teach teach me how to live a life well lived and to do it with joy and pride and kindness and just just beautiful way way to live. And we'll get into the book. Um, I'm jumping ahead of myself. I would love for you to just introduce yourself first and tell us a bit about you and who you are and the books that you write. Okay. Well, I have, um, my first book came out 10 years ago. And um, I'm saying that mainly because I really had never intended uh, to um, be a full-time author. That was just never in the cards uh, for me, I didn't think. I was in uh, in marketing for years. I worked in the telecommunications industry. I worked for ESPN and launched cable companies all over the uh, wow. country. And um, yeah, it was it was um, it was a great career uh, for me at the time. Um, and then um, after uh, our two children were born, um, it uh, became a little bit more chaotic, and I uh, started teaching. Uh, at the college level, uh, teaching marketing. So I did that for, um, uh, well, I actually, I'm still doing it on a part-time basis. I teach some online grad courses in in marketing, business communications. So um, writing is really my third career. um, And 
I I got to say it it just it, it's it's been such an interesting experience for me uh, to meet other um, other writers who are so generous and so giving of their time, their talent, their skills, their expertise, uh, their opinions. It's it's been a wonderful. Uh, wonderful opportunity, wonderful community to grow in, basically. And um, the writing itself, I enjoy, you know, I, I know for a lot of writers, um, you know, they, uh, I like this part, but I don't like this. I love it all. I love the editing. I love the marketing. I love the, um, you know, the initial ideas, but you had mentioned uh, characters and um, yeah, my my this is my eighth book, uh, Catherine's Remarkable Road Trip, uh, which comes out in two days, is my eighth book, and all of my um, books, I I think fe feature strong women that are on some sort of a journey, either looking for a second chance or looking for a do over, if you will, um, kind of rethinking the future of uh, the rest of their lives, whether some of my main characters have been in their early twenties. Uh, Catherine is 77, so I've you know run the whole gamut, but I think we're all looking to um, use the time we have left, whether it's 50 or 60 years or maybe five or 10 um, in the best way we can. And, uh, and that's what these women are all, uh, all have in common is just that, uh, that desire to, um, you know, enjoy their life and live it, live their best life. Yeah. And who isn't looking to do that, right? We are all looking to do right. that in whatever way works for us. And I, I love that you talked a little bit about your philosophy behind all of your books, because that was something that jumped out to me on on your, um, I don't know if it was your website or a social media page, but you said, and is it okay if I quote you? Because I think sure. that it sums up the book so perfectly. I enjoy writing about quirky, lovable women in search of their happy ever after. Second yeah. chances, do-overs, fresh starts, whatever you want to call them. And this is the line I love. Our ability to reinvent ourselves is a beautiful thing. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I think that that, again, that that theme, I know I've looked for it before myself when as a reader and as a uh, watcher of films or whatever, I love when when they explore that, you know, that journey. And, you know, and a happy ever after is is so different for so many different people. It doesn't necessarily mean, you know, being in love and happily married or whatever. It could be a new job, a new home, a new approach to your, you know, to your life. So it's different for different for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And then we all have different entry points in yes. the books of which things we connect to and why, which is the beauty of kind of that special connection between the author and the character and the reader when it all just, oh, it just kind of comes yeah. together. It feels, it feels like magic. So what made you decide to write that first book 10 years ago. I'm curious of the moment you went, you know what? This yeah. is a hard career. <laughs> uh, my, 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 my best friend from, uh, from the time we were in, you know, middle, uh, well, we called it junior high back then. Now it's middle school. Um, but um, she always said to me as, as adults, she said, you always said you were going to write a book. And I said, I really don't remember that, but her memory was probably better than mine. And so it was a family trip. We, we went to Sedona, Arizona, which I just loved. And I got thinking about this, this person, this woman um, at a kind of a crossroads in her life. And I came home from this trip and started writing. And I didn't tell my husband. I didn't tell my friend, Lori. I just started writing. And finally, I, I told it to the two of them. And my husband was like, really? Wow, that's good. And my, and my friend Lori was like, it's about damn time. You know, like, <laughs> what have you been waiting for? So, um, yeah, I just I just had this this image of this uh, of this woman. Um, it's not really in the least bit autobiographical. She's recently divorced. Um, she loses her bid for tenure at the college uh, where she was uh, teaching and again, decides to you know, pick up and start over in Sedona. 
And, um, but being there just, it just inspired me. And I thought if you were going to start over in your life, this would be a great place to do it. So um, the parent, actually Sedona itself became um, one of the main characters, just, you know, in, in a way, because the setting was so um, influential in the thinking and in the, um, you know, the direction and the the path that she took. So it, um, yeah, it was, uh, and, and then I thought, okay, one and done. I wrote my book. I, I got my friend to, you know, back off and <laughs> I set out what I accomplished to do. So yeah, I never, never thought that uh, 10 years later, I'd have my eighth book coming, you know, coming out. So Wow. So it was, so you, so now I have to ask the question, then what made you decide to keep going with book two and, and on and on and on? Yeah. The, the second book, um, well, the, the, it's funny the first book, because and it's called Jeep tour based in, again, based in Sedona. Um, and because I thought it was my only book, I, I, I put a lot into it, a lot of little stories, a lot of little experiences that, that either came from my own background um, or, or friends or stories or whatever. I wanted to put everything in there because I thought, this is it. This is my one book. And then uh, after it came out, I thought, well, I didn't include this. What about this? What about this story? And um, I, I again, I just got this image of this of this and this character um, in my second book um, she's only a she's a 20 year old uh, young woman working behind the front desk of a motel um, at night and a um, up and coming uh, rock star rock band comes in and, and checks in um, and her life changes uh, completely because they um, it's a one night stand but it becomes a lifetime uh, relationship. So it, um, and that's inspired. I, when I was 18, I was working at a motel at night, um, while I was going to college during the day and, um, Dan Fogelberg, I don't know, it's probably a different generation, but he was, um, a wonderful uh, musician and became very, very, uh, famous, but he checked into the, uh, to the motel that I worked at. And years later, I just thought, oh, that would be a great way to start a story. You know, this this unknown guy comes stumbling in and suddenly it's this, you know, um, great relationship and um, a good collaboration. So, um, yeah. So I just kept thinking I had more stories I wanted to tell. Yeah. More to say, more to yes. say, more to share. So it sounds like there are pieces of you in at least in the two books we've talked to mentioned so far, are yeah. there pieces of you that you can find threaded through all of your books? Do they tend to come to you in that kind of moment of, huh, I could do this? Yeah, they, they do. Yeah. I mean, they, they all, uh, all my main characters um, drink coffee, mm-hmm. <laughs> a lot of coffee. Um, and so, so that's a, you know, just a, a trait. Um, there's a little bit of, um, I think, social awkwardness in in the characters also because they tend to overthink things and that's definitely a, a trait of of mine when 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 my husband read jeep tour the first time before it came out he said it's like looking inside your brain <laughs> <laughs> and i think he was like terrified when he gets <laughs> but um so, so yeah, yeah, I think, I'm, I mean, I, I write what I know. So even if the character is from a hundred and, you know, 200 years ago or whatever, I still have that. Um, there's a basic um, um, premise or, or context that I just always feel the need to, to, to start with and to, to work with because it's, it's what I'm most comfortable. And I, almost all of my books are told in the first person. Mm-hmm. Again, that's um, not not all of them, but um, it's it's how I it's how I think. Yeah. You know, it's just it makes me feel con- more connected with the characters. Yeah, and that's probably why I and other readers feel so connected with them too, because that did strike me in Catherine's remarkable road trip, which we can move into talking about. I sure. thought, okay, this is a seventy-seven-year-old woman in the early nineteen mm-hmm. hundreds. And I feel like she could be part of me. <laughs> how is how is this possible, right? It didn't matter 
the time or the location, the place or right. the, the context. It was just the character was so relatable. Um, and, and of course, it'll be relatable depending on on different people. Um, but I, I did make note of her love of coffee because I also have that <laughs> same. And I loved how she just appreciated a really yes. cup of, of coffee. It was the little things that, that mattered to mm -hmm. her. So let's move into talking uh, about Catherine's remarkable road trip. It's coming out in just a couple of days. I actually mentioned your book. I recommended it way back. Well, not way back, but back in April. In part of my Get Literate Patreon community, I recommend um, books every month around a particular theme. And in April, that theme was a Japanese concept called Obaitori. And Obaitori basically is that everybody blooms in their own way, in their own time. And that is exactly what is meant to be. And it is perfect just the way it is. And so I recommended how many days in April? 30 days as September, April, June, and November. 30 days, 30 days in April. <laughs> and my last book that I recommended on April 30th, because I tried to get it as, as close to the release date as I could, was Catherine's Remarkable Road Trip. Because I felt like it embodied that idea of bloom in your own way, in your own time. And then the second piece of Obaitori is don't compare your life to anyone else's. There is no, no like competition that. with mm -hmm. others, it's just what your life is and what makes you happy. And I thought Catherine was the perfect kind of role model for that concept and just a role model for, I think, living into whatever you want your life to look like and appreciate every last drop of it. Um, and so I'd love for you to give readers an overview of that book, give them the the quick summary of Catherine's sure. Remarkable Road Trip so that we can dive into it. Okay, uh, well, I first was introduced uh, to Catherine, uh, who is a real woman. She um, was born in, um, in England uh, in 1830, uh, moved to the United States with her family when she was 18, um, was educated in Paris and London, had a a quite affluent uh, lifestyle as a young uh, woman, a lot of travel, a lot of cultural influences. Her parents uh, sounded just wonderful to me. <laughs> They're just just their their openness to uh, to sharing experiences with their four children and bringing them everywhere, and 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 also the whole idea of giving back that was ingrained in the family. Despite all that they had, there was a very strong and and that. I don't know. I mean, I think that's a it's a popular concept today. Um, I don't think it was all that common back, um, you know, in the in the middle 1800s, uh, necessarily. Um, there was usually the haves and the have nots. And Catherine's family, although they had, they um, were all very civic minded, uh, volunteered, donated. And, and Catherine became a major philanthropist um, at, at uh, towards the end of her life. But I in, was introduced to her when I was doing research for uh, Landscape of a Marriage, which is a historical fiction on um, the life of Frederick Law Olmsted, who was a relative of my husband's. And he became a um, the, the father of American landscape architecture, developed um, you know, Central Park and hundreds of parks and public grounds all over the all over North America. And the more research I did for this book, which came out in uh, 2021, I kept finding references to Catherine Prescott Wormley. Um, um, and it and was it was always like she was being described as uh, fun and fetching. And then other times kind of dull and strident. And I thought, who is this woman? But she was a, she became a lifelong friend of, of Olmsted's and a trusted confidant. And he had a very tight circle that influenced him, whose opinions he sought out. And Catherine was, I won't say she was the only woman, but she was one of the only women that uh, was part of his circle. So I wanted to find out more about her. And um, and and so I did. And even though she had she played a minor role in landscape of a marriage, um, I just thought she deserves her own, you know, her own story. So 
Um, basically, she was a volunteer nurse in the Civil War. She was a um, an educator. She founded uh, a school, a vocational school for underprivileged girls, a trade school, and not only founded the school, but funded it herself for three full years before the city of Newport, Rhode Island took it over. And it still exists today. Um, she became, she was a hospital administrator, always doing all these, um, you know, working for nonprofit organizations, usually volunteering her time, donating her salary. And, uh, and then she got into translating. So for her, this was like a, um, a translating French novels because she was schooled in France, had understood French culture and the language fluently. And she became the first American, even though she's British scholar, to translate all of Moliere's works, as well as, I mean, every French author that you can you can imagine, playwrights and authors. If you Google her or put her name into Amazon, dozens of titles come up as, with her as the translator. Sometimes her name even comes up before the the author themselves. So I just thought she's just has so much going for her, never married, um, you know, a, a very, um, I read letters that she wrote, very um, strong opinions on things, but very compassionate and kind. And what I really liked was I saw connections that she had made with friends and other, and, and, and people in her life that stuck stuck with her. You know, at the end of your life, you'd like to think, wow, there's, you know, more than just a, a handful of people that I've known for, for years. And, and she was one of those people. She just had collected, you know, friends and, and you know, advisees or advisors, I should say, um, just trusted people in her, in her circle. And, um, and to me, that speaks a lot of, uh, to her character that she had these, you know, connections that were so, um, you know, that had been in place for so long and really shaped her life, um, especially as a, um, a single, you know, as a single woman. Yeah. And I think now um, people listening can probably understand why when I turned that last page, I thought, and I wrote in my review, Catherine is my new fictional life coach. She is my new fictional mentor because she was so many different things, right? It showed that you don't have to just be one thing. She was a book translator. She was a, a nurse. She was a philanthropist. And she she just did the things that she enjoyed that made her happy. And what I loved about her, like you mentioned, was she was very strongly opinionated, but she was so kind. Mm -hmm. And so giving, even to strangers, um, at least in, in, in the book. Um, and so to kind of, I don't like to give spoilers um, on the podcast, but I will say that the book opens up with Catherine, as you could tell from the title, going on a road trip. So she's going from, you know, her home in Rhode Island, traveling by herself, you know, in the early 1900s, that was a really big deal, but traveling Thank by you. herself to her home in New Hampshire. Um, and the book just chronicles what should have been an unremarkable road trip in right. her mind ended up being this quite remarkable road trip where things happen, right? And some of those yeah. things, again, without giving spoilers, she meets new people, you know, she meets new friends and she ends up saving lives. And she just has these beautiful connections with people that weren't planned, but were quite powerful. And there was a line in the book that I loved that she said towards the end, which was, perhaps my random meanderings were meant to serve a real purpose after mm -hmm. all. And I, I loved that because the, the whole book is just the span of that road trip. Yeah, and it's in one that road yeah. trip, yeah, you figure out who she is, who she was, the kind of life she lived, the kind of legacy that she's leaving behind, but also not knowing, you know, how much time someone has left. She mm -hmm. is determined to enjoy every minute 
and to not think back on things that you may have regretted, to right. not live in the past, but to go full steam ahead and enjoy everything, including that really, really good cup of coffee. And so I just felt <laughs> yeah. like she was this beautiful mentor for all of us about a life well lived. She, uh, one of the scenes that was purely fictional, she, she stops for, um, uh, for, for gas and ends up wandering into a luncheonette cafe. And, and the only table available, these three young career girls invite her to, to, to sit with them. And, you know, I, it, it was a, the whole road trip was a was a vehicle. I mean, she was a very real person with real accomplishments and a legacy that is, you know, she's in all these, you know, lists of most influential women of this, you know, century or whatever. But I wanted to create a vehicle that um, would allow her to reflect on her life, show who she was, not just you know, tell a, a, you know, kind of a linear story of I was born and this is what happened to me. I wanted it to be more, um, you know, just more showing her personality and showing the characteristics that made her uh, so special. And I thought it would be a good opportunity to, you know, to create that. So she's, she's having lunch with these three young women that are, you know, and she's, offering a little advice and listening to them and letting them share and talk. And one of them she really connects with. And, um, and, and so moments like that, yeah, I just think to myself, I mean, she, she was a teacher. She was, in addition to being a nurse and a hospital administrator, she was a teacher uh, and an author herself. So um, I, 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 I saw her wanting to, uh, to connect and to, to, share what she had, what she had learned and what she knew. And, but I didn't want her to be too preachy. I didn't want her to be this paragon of, you know, anything. Um, she had some real, uh, you know, um, issues sometimes, you know, sometimes doubting herself or whatever, but at the end of the day, she, you know, would yeah. get up and, you know, and get going. So, yeah. 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 And like I said, even though it was historical fiction, you know, early 1900s, uh, it, the connections that I think readers would have with Catherine could happen in 2024. Like I could totally see that road trip with a few yeah. minor changes, you know, happening yeah. to someone right now as they think back on where they've been and where they're going and what's next. But mm -hmm. I really did enjoy the history piece in it because you mentioned um, learning about, I, I think there's a mention of the parks, the theater, I found myself going from your book to Google, like, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know this. And it was just so neat to think about all of that from the beginning and where it started versus where it was today. So I feel like right. you did a beautiful job making it so relevant to 2024, but feeling like you were immersed in the early 1900s. Like I can just imagine her in the car with her driving gear and her glove. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> It just seemed, it was just, it was just wonderful. I, I loved it. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm so, I'm so glad. I hope, uh, I hope your, your view is shared by, <laughs> by dozens, if not millions. <laughs> yeah. And I think one of the things I did afterwards, and this is why I, I, I reached out to you about this topic, because as I mentioned, I really feel like books offer us these opportunities to learn something new to grow, to see ourselves, to see something new. And it was really Catherine that that made me think about this idea that these fictional characters can really be real life life coaches, you know, which seems to be the thing that everybody wants and everybody is today. And I thought, mm -hmm. if I really just think about it more, Catherine had so much to teach me. And I did a couple of things in my notebook. I haven't told you about this yet, but I just wanted to, I wanted you to know what Catherine inspired um, in my in my own life and my own thinking. And then hopefully readers might and listeners might think about the characters they loved, the characters they connected to, and to think about why. Mm -hmm. um, so I ended up, I did I did three things um after I read because I felt like Catherine was was my little life coach. Um, and one of them is, um, I call it a character x-ray. And it's from um, a researcher um, 
her last name is Jewett, and she calls them cultural x-rays. And basically what you do on your notebook page is you, you draw an outline of a person. Mine was a stick figure because I am not an artist, but you basically <laughs> put all the outer characteristics of a character um, on the outside. So how old she she was, what she looked like, um, things that she literally did in the book. But then on the inside, it's the lessons that you're taking from the heart. Mm -hmm. And for me, you know, as I mentioned, Catherine taught me that we can be more than one thing yeah. and that we don't have to stay that one thing. And now I'm connecting to you, knowing that writing was your third career, right? That that we can change and and grow and be something different if we want to. That was such a huge thing I took away from just kind of notebooking about Catherine. And I thought mm -hmm. um, what she what she could teach me. Um, and then I also, at one point, and I, I won't give away the, the details because it's kind of a personal story, but I asked myself, because I had finished reading your book just a couple of days ago, and I was like, what would Catherine say right now? <laughs> because I wanted to say something that that had my opinion, but I wanted to do it with respect and kindness. And she seems to have hit that little that little magic combination. Um, and so I have asked myself that since reading, since reading um, your book, which I love, and she just inspired in me, you know, this, um, this, and you've mentioned it, but just being kind in those acts mm -hmm. of kindness. And I won't say what they are. I mentioned, you know, saving some lives along the way, but there were some true acts of kindness that just went, went straight to my heart. Um, and I kept that with me after I read the book and really looked at little things that I could do differently in my life because when she spread kindness, she felt pretty darn good. And that's mm -hmm. always what happens, right? When you when you give kindness, you just feel it on the inside. And I just wanted you to know how much this character inspired me, just, just made me think differently, made me think differently about myself and made me feel like reading that book made me better because I got to meet her, meet her, you know, in air quotes, but, right, but technically right. meet her because she is a real life, you know, she was a real life person. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I, I just, I love that. And I just wanted you to know how powerful she was for me. I want listeners to know how powerful she was because I think many people listening are a lot like me and will likely connect to, to that book. Um, so this is me just saying, thank you for such a beautiful Thank character. Yep. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. And, and I hope that listeners will think about that. Like, because we read books and we love to escape. And we love the story. Um, and I talk a lot about books sparking action, right? That can make our life better. And just thinking about those characters as having something to teach us mm -hmm. it could really just change the whole experience that we have around the book. Yeah, I, I, I think so. I, I think like what you had said before, the, the, the parallels between things that are going on today and, um, you know, the back then she was, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't believe that she was a true suffragette and going out there and, you know, um, with, with signage and, and getting people to sign, you know, um, um polls or whatever, but I, I, I felt that in her essence that she felt that women had the the power the ability to uh to do whatever they set you know forth to do so i did include some conversations that she expressed you know some opinions but it was also a little bit um removed from it too because again i i wanted to create that balance between making her you know, a, an authentic, relatable woman that you would enjoy um, sitting, you know, uh, in the passenger seat of her of her car when, you know, when she's off on this on this trip, um, and and not make her so um, unapproachable and perfect. With I have all the answers, I know all, you know. So I wanted her to. Uh, she learned during the during the week as well. She picked up because, and I think that's part of what being a good mentor. Um, I know certainly of being a, a college professor, you have to listen, you know, you, you, there, there needs to be that respect. 
uh, for whomever you're you're dealing with, working with. And you have to be willing to listen to what they, um, you know, have to say before you start thinking, well, what's my reply going to be, you know? Um, she was truly there in the moment. And I think um, a road trip is a perfect kind of opportunity to, you know, there's, there's no laundry to do. There's no, right. you know, you're, you're, <laughs> you're driving and you're thinking and you're talking and you're meeting people. And that's all there is. There's no, you know, there's nothing else. So I thought it was a good way to kind of clear her uh, mind to, to really think about things in her life that, and most of the, most of the things she looked at as um, she didn't have a lot of regrets, you know, so it wasn't like the, the road trip wasn't a big revelation for her where she suddenly realized, oh, all of this time I've been this way or whatever. Um, you know, all along, she she pretty much had this, but it was just nice to kind of reflect on it with friends old and new that she um, happened to spend time with during the her week on the road, so. And she said something um, or thought something perhaps um, in the book that I've jotted down and it's actually on a, a sticky note. Nobody can see it, but it's, it's on a sticky note right over there. And I thought it was the perfect... Um, advice for a, a life well lived, the perfect mantra, whatever we want to call it. And it was this, count your blessings, ask for what you need and live a happy life. There it is. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. Yeah. And she lived it and she embodied it. And she taught us readers that along that entire road trip. I honestly, I did not want that to end. I thought, can you just extend it? Can we not stop in New Hampshire? <laughs> can we go a little bit further? <laughs> at the Canadian border or something. Yeah. 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 Um, so I'm, I'm just so I'm grateful that you wrote it. I'm grateful you didn't stop at your one and done <laughs> that you kept going um, for yeah. this. And I know, I know readers will love it. And in just a couple of days, if they're listening on the day this podcast is airing, your book will be available in two days. So they can either pre-order it or or go grab it. Where can they find more about you online or connect with you or find find your books? I'd love for you sure. to share. Um, all of um, my, my most recent, my the four books that I've um, written with my current publisher, who's Black Rose Writing out of Texas, they've been wonderful with distribution and marketing and, and support. Um, all of those books are available through uh, Amazon, independent booksellers, Barnes and Noble, the book shop, um, and anywhere you can, <laughs> um, most of the, for the, in, you know, for the brick and mortar stores, you'd have to, um, order them for the most part. Um, but to, to find out more about what, um, you know, what my, my books are like, um, probably my Facebook author page is probably the most up to date. Uh, and it's just, Gail Olmstead author. <laughs> it's nothing, uh, nothing, nothing clever or uh, tricky there, but um, easy to find. That's, that's what matters. Easy to yeah, find. Yeah, I know. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, so I, I think that's remember. probably the best, um, uh, the best place to, to try to connect. And my email's everywhere. So I answer every email that I get even, well, no, I shouldn't say that. I don't answer every one. I get some crazy ones, but um, <laughs> I answer most of the ones I get. Wonderful. Well, I'll make sure to put links to um, those places you mentioned, your books, um, along with your Facebook page in the show notes so that people can easily just click on it, find you, find the books and add it to their TBR and add Catherine to their, their list of life coaches and mentors that I think will really serve nice. everybody well who reads the book just moving forward. So such a gift. Thank you. Thank you for Thank writing you, it. Stephanie. Thank you for chatting with me about it. I'm, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh. And listeners, thank you for listening to another episode of the Get Literate podcast, and I'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the Get Literate podcast. You'll find links to all the books, resources, and ideas mentioned in the show notes and at alitlife.com. Plus, if you want more, you might like to join my Patreon community. 
There, you'll find additional inspiration for your reading and writing life, like bonus podcast episodes, bibliotherapy book calendars, monthly book clubs, notebooking challenges, live events, giveaways, and much, much more. It's only $5 a month, and you get instant access to all of the previous content, too. You can learn more at getliterate.co. And one more thing. If you love what you listened to today, please take a moment to rate and review the podcast or take a screenshot of the episode and text it to a friend. This helps the podcast grow and builds our bookish and notebookish community too. Thanks for listening.